And you better get out of Vanport as fast as you can because the dike is broken. This place will be on the water in a half an hour. Edward Washington works with the Office of Global Diversity and Inclusion at PSU. He's also a Vanport survivor who remembers May 30th, 1948 like it was yesterday. This is old footage of the flood. Washington was about 12 or 13 at the time and lived in town with his family. He's now standing in the Vanport building, meant to honor the people who lost their lives that day. It was totally destroyed uh, in all about one hour or less and completely destroyed. Uh, people had to be relocated. Washington's family eventually settled in Northeast Portland. He says he's lucky they all made it out alive. This mural inside the building represents the diversity of Vanport and the residents who came from different cultures and backgrounds. It was especially significant for black Oregonians who were unable to buy homes outside of Vanport. Uh, perhaps the most uh, significant thing about Vanport that it was, it was really a totally integrated city, although people were living in various sections. The Vanport building is 175,000 square feet and seven stories tall. It took about two years to complete. It's not only home to PSU, but OHSU, PCC, and Portland's Bureau of Planning and Sustainability. The collaboration nature of it, too, I think really um, speaks a lot to to Vanport and, and the, the, the grit and the people who live there and really the, the, the um, ability for people to get along. And it is significant. It's significant to this state. It's significant to the history of this state. It's significant to the history of this city. Uh, so it's appropriate. It's the way it should be. Now, PSU actually started in Vanport. It was called the Vanport Extension Center, and it was eventually moved downtown after the flood. Laurel. Good to see the Vanport residents honored like that. Thank you, Brian. To hear Mr. Washington's account was also really powerful. Mm.